Good afternoon. I'm Chief Master Sergeant Dave Flossie. I'm here from Headquarters Air Force Materiel Command. Is our command chief there? Uh, our, our command is here to serve all your commands as well as our own command. So uh, happy, happy to serve for and with you. Uh, we're going to do some brief closing comments today. I'll hand it over to Chief Sparks here in a minute. Uh, but I, I just wanted to share a couple perspective and points from, from earlier today that I'd ask for you to take into consideration. So of all the things you're going to hear this week, today was very, very it, they're, they're all important things, but there were some critical things that happened today about leadership and your role as Chief Master Sergeants at the organizational level that you serve at, whether that's on a staff, a flight, squad, or uh, other organizational levels across the service and the joint community. And that's what's within our control. So a lot of the briefing was education driven and it helps you put tools in your toolbox to, to educate and inform others. But today it was, a lot of it's about action, right? The airman part of this business is where you hit your home runs and take care of this team. You're at the exploit phase in your career, right? You've been, you've been trained, educated, developed, mentored, supported, and promoted. And we're done with that, by and large. There will be some small opportunities to develop a little bit and, and kind of grow your strategic leadership capability. But we really are going to make money off of exploiting all that training, education, development. And so today, a lot of the briefings you got from the A1 team is about what the, what the policy people are doing to, to enable your success, right? And we, we tend to have a tendency to say, well, what about this, what about this, what about that? But so what I, I want to challenge you as a team of leaders to, to stop and consider, well, what, what can I do? Where am I not constrained? How can, you, how can you take those things you thought about in developing airmen, educating them, building good leaders? You know, we, we briefed about prepping the line, right? Blaze gave us that briefing. DC talked a little bit more about it in his half A1 update. There's nothing stopping a master sergeant right now from putting things in a JQS that is going to require a senior airman or a young staff sergeant to demonstrate competency prior to you handing that staff sergeant or senior airman the world's most valuable resource, right? An airman, not not, not a piece of equipment. It doesn't matter which job you do. We should take the business of leading and developing airmen incredibly seriously. And a lot of those tools are in our hands right now. We don't have to wait on Air Force policy to change, right? You have to get aligned with your leadership team at your organizational level, ensure it is in, it's in sync with your commander's priorities. There may be some risk you have to encourage your commander to take, and that's what we do, right? Speak in terms of risk, talk about the importance of this leadership, and go out and execute. And if you're executing and you're finding that it's working, then communicate that. You can, you can collaborate with this peer group and you can get anything done that you want if you're willing to work hard to take care of your airmen. Uh, it, we are in a resource constrained environment, so that requires your, your capability to think strategically and, and apply what we're learning here to take care of your airmen. So, I, I, Prepping the line is, a, is, is, is the example I wanted to leave you with today. But that, that extends through a lot of what we're talking about in the Enlisted Force Development Action Plan, a lot of the changes to the Enlisted Evaluation System, how we're going to do feedback, uh, whether, whether we do effective feedback or if we do feedback to, to fill a block is going to be largely dependent on your ability to effectively lead teams. DC can't do it from the Pentagon. Frankly, nobody can tactically lead from the Pentagon, right? Nobody's tactically leading from a MAGCOM staff. It happens, it happens at the, the squadron level and below, by and large, across the service. And we do. We have the world's most capable airmen, right? Lots of countries fly F-16s. Not lots of countries have United States Air Force airmen. In fact, most of those F-16s being flown by foreign countries, they've, hired, they've contracted out logistic support that you're airmen that are separating and going and doing it, right? Uh, so, so the things that we bring to the table that are unique is, is a trained, highly educated, motivated, all-volunteer workforce. The more you talk about that in terms of what we do have and what we can do, the more likely you are to build a successful culture. So this is a great opportunity to kind of get, a, get an idea of where Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, where their, where their ideas and priorities uh, with our functional competencies, our airman leader qualities, the action orders that General Brown is very serious about to align that with what we do on the flight line and in back shops across the world, right?
All right, so, so take that with you if you, if you will, and, and I'll be here all week. I'm happy to discuss in fr uh, more detail if you'd like. I'm going to hand this over to Chief Sparks, and she's going to wrap it up. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Are you guys freezing cold like I am? <laughs> well, good, you're awake then. Um, thanks, Dave. Great, great words. Um, I think that's awesome perspective. And so yesterday you guys had readiness, right? How many of your minds were blown yesterday? I know I talked to several of you who, who said, I, I need to start getting a better understanding of what's going on right around me, right? And so I think that's a great perspective. Readiness does not happen without our people. I and mean, you heard all about that today and all the, the programs that are going on. One of the things I would like to reiterate about somebody, I don't remember who said it this morning, but we really need to start focusing on like what we are doing positively. There's a lot of awesome stuff going on. And so while we have a tendency, and our airmen do have a tendency to, to focus on the negative, I'd ask for you to share what you're learning with your folks. Uh, first of all, look up and look around. See what's going on, right? We're, you are responsible now for sharing the information that you're learning. It's no longer about your functional area, your office, your organization. It's about much, much broader picture. And so we ask that you, you take this information and share that and share the successes of what you're seeing out there and own it. Like Dave said, all the things that we're doing out there, you've got to own part of that. You don't wait for a lot of times we're like, we're waiting for them to tell us what to do. You're chiefs now. You need to own some of that and, and do what you can within your own uh, realm and your own organizations at your own basis. Um, just a couple things. I remember sitting here, I'm, I'm one of the old crusty ones now. I was ten, 10 years ago when I sat where you're sitting. However, we did not have something like this. We had a small breakout in our MAGCOMs, and I remember Linus Jordan, uh, my, my MAGCOM command chief at that time, um, he said these few words, and he said, it's all about relationships. And many of you guys have probably heard me over the years talk a little bit about relationships. It's all about relationships. When I was a master sergeant, Linus Jordan then uh, sent an email to four individuals that didn't know each other and said, I think you all, you all have something in common. I want to virtually connect you four. And those four are Chief Master Sergeant today, Chris Rogers, 19th Air Force Command Chief. Chris, uh, Chief Master Sergeant Katie McCool, she's going to the 2nd Air Force. Um, Melanie Knoll, who's retired Air AFDW Command Chief, and myself. None of us knew each other. And I was like, okay, great. So we kind of made a connection virtually. Over the years, right, we, we are still connected to this day because somebody took it upon themselves to make those connections, those networks. What you're doing here t this week, hopefully, is not staying within your circle, your cliques, your AFSCs. Hopefully, you're getting out there and meeting folks. I'll tell you that I don't do anything on, on a single day without calling my brothers and sisters that I met a long, long time ago that I've invested in relationships with. It's all about relationships. And you can leverage those relationships and better take care of your airmen with those relationships. So please invest in that while you're here. You're not going to learn a whole lot about what we're sharing up here as much as you will in the relationships that you are investing in over time. Um, another mentor of mine, Chief Master Sergeant number five, Gaylor, he said you can't delegate relationships. We talked a lot about making sure you delegate what you can and only do what you need to do as chiefs. Um, and that's a lesson I'm still trying to learn myself. But I will say you cannot delegate relationships. That's one thing you can't do. So uh, take that for what it's worth. Um, let's see. The quote of the day for me was from the very, our very own Chief Master Sergeant Derek Crowder. Don't unravel it before you enroll it. There's a lot of change happening in our Air Force, right? And, that, and sometimes it's a, it feels a little overwhelming. I can't myself keep up with all the changes that are going on. But what I would say is give it a chance. See what happens. Learn about it, educate your folks on it, and then uh, support it before you try to unravel it. And I would encourage us to help our airmen have that same mentality. And the last thing I'll leave you with before you go into your breakouts today, you have a, a great opportunity to go out into some small groups, which we haven't had the chance to do in the past few days, um, is last year we were able to host our uh, Chiefs Orientation at, at, in the MAGCOMs, separate MAGCOMs. One of the benefits of that, we were, able, we're a little more small group discussion. And uh, General Clark, my boss, who's an awesome leader, shared a couple things uh, to the new chiefs. And I would just offer, I wrote these notes, and I, I, it's something that I think resonated real well with me. And that is be humble, be vulnerable, be a sensor, be a translator, be a problem solver, 
speak truth to power, remember your purpose, and connect your people to their purpose. That's exactly what a chief is supposed to do. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Sparks. Thank you, Chief Olson. And thank you, Chief Lossy, today for being our mentors. We we'll really appreciate all the wisdom and expertise you pass on to these new chiefs. I like how you said be, because in the Chief Leadership Academy, we talk about being a chief and not doing chiefly things. So it's more about who you are, not what you do. So as a chief, focus on who you are, and everything else will come from that point in your